Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you are all doing well and getting ready to spend some time with your family members for the upcoming holidays. This is Jonathan with Ordinary American, and today we're going to go from this to this. Okay, without further ado, let's get into it. Full disclosure, I requested a stock from Voids for a review, and they graciously provided it. There was no exchange of money or any influence from there on what that review would look like. Boyd's has been in the market making high-quality aftermarket stocks in the USA for 40 years. There are a ton of different shapes available. I went with the Rimfire Hunter stock for Ruger 1022, and you can pause it here to see all the features and design elements. My intended use is just using it as a trainer and target shooting at distance, and I wanted it to look and feel like a traditional stock, but with all the improvements of a Boyd's aftermarket. Boyd's stocks are offered in a variety of colors for the laminated hardwoods, as well as the, uh, offering walnut options. The stocks are built to withstand use in various environments for a long time and are impervious to different solvents and other weather conditions. I went ahead with a nutmeg look, which I think is a very classic but very noticeable look. Each shape is configured to offer a different set of capabilities and handling characteristics. I chose the Rimfire Hunter. They also have various laser stippling and laser checkering options available. On the website, you'll see a huge number of makes and models supported before you get to customize your stock. I went with a nutmeg. No high gloss, standard length of pull, and standard recoil pad. No engraving or laser checkering. The website also has a bunch of resources in case you need more info. Okay, so this is just a standard 1022, and here's how it's set up. I've got a uh, forward sling swivel that I installed myself with an Uncle Mike's kit and the rear uh, sling mount is from uh, Blue Force Gear, some uh, strap that they sell, and it makes for a two-point sling using Magpul Paraclips. Um, I've also got a RD50 from AT3 Tactical. In terms of shipping, it just took a few days for the order to process and for the stock to ship, which was really nice since I was uh, I was like kind of impatient. I wanted to get that hands on the uh, my hands on the stock uh, right away and uh, swap it out for the uh, from the uh, old uh, original stock. Uh, the tracking number was provided, uh, everything was smooth and easy, no issues there to report. Uh, the packaging was uh, discreet, the only logo you'll see is Boyd's, so you can't really tell what's inside. And when you open it up, you'll see that you have the uh, wrapping paper, which I thought was adequate, uh, the stock had no bumps or bruises in any way. And you'll see the stock, you'll get your stock right away, it's really really nice, just from taking it out of the box it looked sweet. Uh, inside you'll also have some paperwork, and you'll also get a sticker. All right, and here she is. You can see what a beauty uh, the stock is. It's really a nice piece of furniture uh, to upgrade your 1022, and let's get into it. All right, first thing we're gonna do before we uh, take it down is check it, clear it. And then we'll set that off to the side. We'll take off the two-point sling, and that's coming off. And this is just your typical 1022 uh, disassembly procedure. Uh, probably seen it a lot of times before. Uh, I'm certainly not the best one in explaining everything, but um, YouTube is your friend, and I definitely learned a lot of things from YouTube. All right, we'll take down the barrel band also. And you'll see that the Boyd stock does not have a barrel band, which is another uh, unique feature about it. And then we'll uh, unscrew the takedown screw, and the receiver should slide right out. We're just going to disassemble the uh, st uh, receiver from the stock and we have to finagle the safety till it's in the middle and then we can just lift the stock, uh, lift the receiver away from the stock. We'll set the stock down to the side and you can see it's your typical mass produced uh, 1022 stock, uh, sparse on the details, sparse on the design and functionality. And the boy stock, that is a really, really good looking stock. Uh, the nutmeg look is a very uh, nutmeg uh, stain is a very classic little look. It's not too flashy like some of the other options, but it's still very eye-catching nonetheless. Now, looking inside the uh, Ruger stock, you could just see very sparse in the details. I had to add electrical tape in order to take up some of the uh, slack in the tolerance so that the receiver wouldn't uh, move around as much. Now, compare that to the Boyd stock. And the Boyd stock feels much more substantial. It actually feels like a real stock. Um, has noticeably improved ergonomics, and it's like a 
heirloom mantle like look you know something you could put up uh, above your fireplace something you could give as a gift to a friend to spruce up their rifle and i opted for like i said the nutmeg look i think it looks really really nice on uh, this kind of shape of the, and this kind of a uh, particular uh, rifle something you'll take outdoors something you'll hand down to your kids we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison now and that way you can appreciate the differences in shape And you'll see, first of all, that there's a different contour in the stock shape. The uh, Boyd stock has a Monte Carlo comb that makes for a, a much better uh, cheek rest. And it's also uh, substantially thicker and heavier uh, compared to the uh, 1022 stock, which people have said feels like a toy. And I opted for the non-glossy look, so but the, some, there is some gloss that will come across uh, from light, but nothing uh, too bad at all. I actually prefer that look. Uh, you can see the pistol grip is also uh, more vertical on the Boyd's, which is a more natural grip, less fatigue in your wrist. Inside, there is also a stain. Everything is nicely done, uh, has the markings from the manufacturer, and there is inlet has been cut out, so that way you can uh, have uh, weight savings, and you're also get, going to get a little bit of a longer forehand and uh, two uh, swing swivels. All right, so to just to compare the dimensions between the Boyd stock and the Ruger stock, the Ruger stock length comes in at 29 inches. We'll measure the width of the uh, receiver area, and that comes in at just under two inches. And I'm measuring off camera the forend, which comes like around uh, 1.75 inches, so it gets slightly narrower. And you can see the stock itself Again, nothing special, just your typical standard uh, Ruger stock. Um, you know, typical mass produced, nothing very special, nothing, no, not particularly well at uh, feeling like a real rifle. Uh, feels more like a toy. Compared to the Boyd stock, which comes in, and let's take a length measurement. Boyd stock comes in at around 31 inches and has a slightly wider forend, as you can see from here. Um, the grip is also uh, slightly fuller to better fill your hand. Yeah, just under slightly, just under two inches, and the forend also is just under two inches. So uh, you can see up close, nice staining, nice gloss. Again, not the high gloss, just regular gloss, but just provides the exact balance between gloss and uh, you can see that a very thoughtful and tasteful staining. Uh, no defects there at all. Uh, it's very smooth to the touch. Uh, no burrs, no dings, no scratches. In a side-by-side -side comparison, you can see that the Ruger is shorter and uh, tapers towards the end while the Boyd stays uh, straight and is uh, slightly thicker as well. And just from every angle, you can see that the Boyd stock looks substantially uh, more like a rifle stock, substantially better looking, uh, handles better in any way, uh, in every way uh, compared to the uh, Ruger. And you can see the little uh, fluting area for your uh, palm. And when we compare the uh, butt stocks, you can see that the uh, shape is, you can see the Monte Carlo comb and a vertical grip on the Boyd stock. And again, the Rimfire Hunter is uh, just one of many models that Boyd's offers, and they each have their own uh, design features built into them. I thought this was the most, the one most similar to the uh, Ruger stock, but with noticeably enhanced improvements. All right, let's compare the butt stocks now. You can see that the Boyd stock has a half-inch rubber recoil pad that comes included uh, from the factory, and that's uh, nicely contoured uh, for shouldering. And you can compare it to the uh, Ruger butt stock, which is just a piece of plastic. You know, nothing special about it at all. Uh, not very comfortable uh, to shoulder for long periods of time. Okay, so let's get the Boyd stock set up with the receiver. You're just going to angle the receiver down like that till it hits the ledge, and then bring the receiver into position. Take your takedown screw and insert it, first by hand and then finishing it off with the screwdriver. And be careful not to cross thread. And you can see from here that there's no gaps, no... Uh, you can see that the tolerances are quite tight. Um, everything is fitting nicely. There's no uh, 
Nothing is loose, loosey goosey, nothing is shaking. Everything is uh, looking very, very good so far. Okay, and that's it. That's all you need to do. You can see that it looks really, really good from here. Uh, looks and feels like a grown up gun. Test the controls, make sure everything works. Oh, my bad on the mag. There we go. Everything works, mag release, everything is accessible. Nothing is shaking, nothing is loose, nothing is canted. All right, and from here you can appreciate that we have two sling swivels in the front, and that's where we're going to, uh, we're gonna use the rear one for our uh, two-point sling. That way the front sling swivel can be used for a bipod or just for the support hand or for a bag. All right, let's talk about ergonomics. The differences between them are night and day. And once you pick a Boyd stock up, you'll know what I'm talking about. The Boyd stock uh, is a very natural feeling shape that fills up your hand and allows you to have your thumb on the same side or wrapped around. I'm a righty, so my firing hand is the right hand and the support hand will be the left hand, which we'll get to in a second. The palm also sits nicely in the flutes set in after the comb, and my wrist is also much less fatigued with a more natural grip angle. In terms of support hand ergonomics, the forend is built wider and more oval shaped compared to the original Ruger stock, and that allows for more stable bag shooting, less rolling around, and the increased thickness as well as a longer length uh, gives uh, more options for where you want your support hand to hold on to. The Boyd stock also has much tighter tolerances for the Ruger receiver, and you can see no gaps. Uh, it's a much better, much more uh, tighter overall fit. Another feature of the Boyd stock is that it is free floated, which means that there is nothing interfering with, and nothing, no touching, no contact points, no touching of the barrel and the stock um, as that round is traveling through, and nothing is interfering with your barrel harmonics, which will. Uh, result in greater accuracy at distance. So for this test, we just take a uh, folded piece of paper, slide it under the barrel and make sure it's not contacting the stock and it does. So this is a free floated barrel and uh, that's another uh, feature of the stock itself. Most of us will also have optics on our rifles. And so it's easier to get a good cheek weld when you have uh, something like the Monte Carlo comb that the Boyd stock has. I'm able to get a more heads up display of the optic with my eye and it's very helpful for getting any kind of stable consistent shooting stance. The contour on the original Ruger stock on the, on the other hand means I can only use the bottom half of the butt stock it has to sit really high up in my shoulder otherwise the gun will sit too low and I won't be able to see my red dot sight. The Ruger 1022s on the other hand are a fixed uh, length of pull from the factory and that comes in at 13 and a half inches. Alright, so let's measure the length of pull on the Boyd stock. I ordered it in the standard configuration, which is 13 and 3 fourths inches, and that's what it comes out to. The Boyd stock also lets me tuck in my arms for a tighter modern stance, and allows for a quick low ready, as well as a more modern support grip that has more for me to hold on and can extend as far away or as close as I need. The 1022 clearly has a shorter than comfortable length of pull, causing me to chicken wing my arm out. The plastic at the end also digs into my chest somewhat. In conclusion, if you're looking to move away from cheap plastic and wood stocks and enhance your rifle, you owe it to yourself to take a look at a Boyd stock. They look amazing, first of all, they have well thought out designs and customization options, and they offer a substantial upgrade in terms of quality, durability, and functionality with your firearm. They would also make a great holiday gift as well. I want to thank Boyd's again for the opportunity to review the stock and share it with you all. It's a really nice upgrade, both in design, the aesthetic, the functionality, and performance over your original stock. Although I am just a sample size of one, I am confident that no matter what model you are working with, you will get a worthwhile upgrade with their stocks.
Please like and subscribe for more videos. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below, and I'll be more than happy to answer and interact with you all. Until next time, wishing everybody a safe and enjoyable holiday with your families.